Hey guys, I'm Chad Hoover. Welcome to today's video where we're going to do the overview initial walkthrough of the Jackson Liska. Fish on! That's a toe, brother. Golly! All right, guys, so what we're going to do in these kayak reviews is we're going to do three-part videos for each boat that I can. In some cases, I'm going to work with anglers to review their boat, and I might not be able to do all three videos, but when possible, the idea is that I'm going to get a boat like this, and before it ever hits the water, I'm going to do the overview and kind of initial uh, thoughts on the boat. Then I'm going to do a full day on the water with the boat and give you my thoughts as they're kind of coming to me and, and uh, you know, that, that on the water like real-time impressions of things that I would change, things that I like, um, you know. And then what we're gonna do is after I've had either a full day of fishing or several full days of fishing, I'm gonna come back to that particular boat and I'm gonna give you a full walkthrough where I talk about rigging, accessories, how to outfit the boat, some clever things that I've seen other anglers do and things along those lines. So what we're gonna do right now is we just got this Jackson Liska. So I'm gonna walk through this boat and kind of give you my initial impressions overview and we're just going to go bow to stern and we're going to do that concept for most of the boats that we do so right up front you're going to notice it's got a standard handle i do like the fact that the drain plug is on the top and it's in the front because that allows you to stand the boat up and get almost all of the water out a lot of times manufacturers put the drain plug up towards the front or towards the the back of the boat but it's that far from the end so when you try to stand it up on its end or stand it up on the side there's still that much water left in the boat so that's really clever and i like the fact that there's plenty of room here uh, for your knuckles to get in under that handle and uh, overall nothing to complain about there moving on back i really like this hatch concept i like this single one-handed operation where you can turn that thing i don't like having a whole bunch of craziness but that one-handed operation is really cool but I think the big miss up here is these bungees. Now, I know that you could probably tuck something underneath there, but as fishermen, we're not doing these day trips where we got a bunch of gear in the boat. And this boat is really what I would consider a nice river boat. And so I just don't think you also want these holes in your nose. So if you punch through a wave, because these things come all the way through. So the first thing that I would do if I got this boat was probably take these bungees off. So when I'm laying my rod up there, I don't have to worry about my hook getting caught under there. And then I'm gonna end up with these holes. So if I punch the boat's nose through a wave, so again, uh, only downside to this hatch design is I'm not a big fan of these bungees. I do like the fact that it's gasketed and I do like the fact that when you close it off, it's gonna be good to go. And that might counteract the fact that these holes are on the underside, but I still don't like the bungee. So not a big deal. I do like the hatch. And there may be some people that like the fact that you can slide stuff under here. And again, once I try it out, this gasket might be fine and I might be overthinking the holes. Again, I just would take that bungee off probably right out of the gate. I may do one river trip with it and see if it doesn't get in the way and I'll give you guys an update once I actually try it out. Uh, one of Jackson's staples is that they mount this bar on there to put your stand-up strap. The stand-up strap, in my opinion, is really more of a sit assist. Most of us don't necessarily need the strap to stand up but it's really nice to have that strap as you lean back to lower yourself down. And we'll talk about that when we get back to the seat. So this is a nice addition. Uh, and I like to use my rogue strap at the front to be able to tow the boat. Now I am a big fan of the way that they laid this out here. This, uh, having the track built into it, having this uh, front hatch that allows me to set up a depth finder here if I want to, uh, poke a hole in this, put a grommet in there and then store my battery right inside or I could put a hole here or run my cord into the front. And again, it's just gonna make it really nice and easy to mount electronics if I decided to use this boat as a lake boat. I personally picked this boat up as a river boat. And so therefore I'm probably not gonna go crazy with electronics. Uh, and I like the fact that this thing is here for putting a camera mount uh, on the front, throwing a rod holder on there, whatever. But this hatch is pretty clever. Uh, not a fan of the center scupper. I've never been a fan of center scuppers on pretty much any boat ever, but the way that they designed it, it's not a big problem uh, when it comes to the main reason is that that's the lowest point on the boat and it has a tendency to drag. And so therefore I've seen boats prematurely fail because that center scupper is there. We'll flip the boat over in just a second. We'll take a look at that. But right out of the gate, I'm just gonna tell you, it's probably gonna gurgle and make noise. And as a bigger dude, when I sit down in the boat, especially jumping in and out of it on the river, I'm probably going to squirt stuff up inside here. And if I'm trying to keep stuff in here that I want to keep dry, then I definitely don't want the scupper there. And there really isn't a clean way for water to get in there. So I may have to change my mind if I punch the wave and water comes over the top and goes in here and stands. But initially, I think I'm probably going to plug this thing up 
uh, because I don't want water to come in from the bottom. Uh, but again, I really like the layout. I like the fact that you can mount more tracks. You can mount depth finders and stuff up here and you leave your track for other accessories like cameras and rod holders and things like that. Again, I like this one-handed operation of the hatch. That's nice and easy. I like the open flat cockpit. I would probably change these knobs out right here just because fly line and other stuff's gonna get caught underneath them. I would probably take these off and go with the Yak Attack round knobs, uh, or I might mount a cup holder or uh, one of the one of the uh, Yak Attack camera balls or something on there so I can get additional usage out of that, but probably not gonna leave these on there for fly line and things like that to get attached. Speaking of that, I do like the way that the seat is set up to where you loosen these up and you can actually uh, trim the seat uh, fore and aft. Um, as a big dude, I always have a harder time getting through shallow water. And even though I've lost over 100 pounds in the last five months, it's still nice to be able to trim that boat forward to get your weight forward and get through that shallower water. Predicting how this boat's going to perform in shallow water is pretty easy for me. It's wide, doesn't have a whole lot of rocker, doesn't have a real uh, uh, keel that's hanging down uh, below the, the flat part of the boat. So I imagine this thing's going to scoot through some really skinny water. Now, right out of the gate, they put these pull pins on here to lock the seat in place, which is nice. Um, and so I would probably have made that hole a little bit bigger because it is a little bit difficult to get in and out right out of the gate. But maybe as it wears in, that's not a problem. But you pull these pins out and you just take the seat out and drop it down into the lower position. Uh, oops, sorry, you go in backwards first. And then you drop the seat down to the lower position. Now I've measured this against several other boats that I've used. And I know that the low position is going to be too low for me. And I'm actually a little disappointed at how high the higher position is because this seat uh, is quite a bit shorter um, at seven and three quarters inches than many of the boats that I've used. So even though I imagine they did that to lower the center of gravity, so for river fishing, you're not that high, I'm probably am gonna play around with raising uh, this seat height a little bit just for different configurations. Um, and so the seat is super wide, I love that. I like the fact that there's this molly system on the back that is gonna allow you to attach a bunch of stuff to it. Uh, in fact, these uh, seat backs tend to loosen up because I've used other Jackson boats. So you're either gonna have to constantly tighten this up or what you're gonna have to do is put you some kind of carabiner or clip or something on there to hook on that so that when you stand up, your seat back doesn't fall down and you inadvertently you know, sit down on it. One thing I do wanna point out about these types of seats is this suspension straps underneath these seats. You're really gonna want to get a hold of those things and keep them nice and wrenched down, especially if you're a bigger dude because if you don't, let me show you exactly what's gonna happen. If you don't keep these sit seats nice and taut, what's gonna happen is you're gonna get a scoop in there. And when you get that scoop in there, that seat is going to have a tendency for you to sit down in it and the sides of the seat frame uh, are gonna have a tendency to squeeze your legs and it's not gonna be that comfortable. Same thing with the back. If you can keep that webbing taut, pulled down and cinched down, you're gonna have a lot more uh, comfortable experience. I like the fact that they gave plenty of strap here because when you transport this boat, what you're gonna wanna do is loosen these straps up. You're gonna lay that seat flat put it down in a low position. It's gonna be easy to load that boat, turn it on its side for stacking, get it in and out of trailers. So I really like the fact that they left enough strap there. I've seen quite a few manufacturers to where you need to lay the seat down, but they only leave you like this much strap. So every time you wanna lay the seat back down, you gotta take it out and re-thread it through there. So kudos to Jackson. Uh, a lot of that probably had to do with the fact that they wanted to be able to ship the seat just like that. But that also is a benefit to those of us who travel to be able to lay that seat flat, tuck it in and you can stack boats. I kind of wish the seat bar here had a little bit of an outward bend to it so that it doesn't catch the back of your legs, you know, right here on the side. That's really only a factor for, you know, bigger dudes like myself or guys that are in that same category. Uh, and just sitting on it on the ground, it's not that big a deal, but, and that's something that you could probably even modify yourself by just getting some pipe benders and kind of bend it a little bit. But that's one thing that I think manufacturers should take a little bit into consideration. All you have to do is sweep that out a little bit and it's gonna avoid that altogether. I do like the fact that the bar drops down and it's not hitting you uh, in the back of the leg. So guys that have had sciatic nerve issue, your leg's gonna come down, it's not gonna be touching the back of your leg. So that was a really big win uh, in this design and I'm a big fan of their fabric. So again, big, ample, wide seat. Move that thing up into the high position. I'm guessing it's not gonna be high enough for my liking, but I also like seats really high uh, and I'm kind of spoiled. 
Again, I love the fact that you can scoot that thing forward. It's gonna leave you a lot of room here. But before we go back, let me talk about these scuppers. I love the fact that the scuppers are oval and I like the fact that they got a nice slant to them because if you bust through a wave on a river in open water, it means the water is gonna vacate really fast. And that's a big issue when it comes to fishing rivers is that you get a wave or if you punch through a wave and you get the boat full of water, it's pretty squirrely. It's like sitting on a grease log until that water comes out of there. So having these scuppers angled, having them to where movement is going to help vacate that water and having enough scuppers that you got two here, two under the seat and two back here, it's gonna give you plenty of stability. So even as a bigger dude, when you're standing, if you notice these boats all are gonna have some flex to them, having those scuppers right where you're standing is going to give you that additional stability because that's what scuppers actually do in a sit on top kayak is they provide some stability. Speaking of stability and rigidity, I like how they put these ridges in the cockpit because that's gonna go a long ways for stiffening up the floor. That's gonna go a long ways for preventing sagging. And a lot of times if the boat floor sags, it pulls these walls in and just starts to cause all kinds of problems. So kudos to Jackson for stiffening the design by putting these ridges in here. Same thing by putting this beam across the tank well. That tank well beam is gonna do a lot to provide stability. The one thing that I can tell you in my initial assessment of the boat that I was a little bit, a little bit concerned about is how easy it would be to rig it for a motor. Uh, the line guides go in to where they put a flush mount. So again, I'll probably talk about that later on if I decide to try to put a motor on it. It's just initially, it doesn't look like it's that easy. But then again, this is probably just gonna be one of those grab and go river fishing boats and maybe not something that I wanna put a motor on, uh, even though it is already set up for a power pole, which makes it set up for a torpedo bracket. Uh, I'm just not exactly sure how easy it's gonna be to rig the steering when the flush mount is right there. Speaking of flush mounts, actually, let me talk about the tank well first. Love the tank well. It's wide. It'll allow you to put a black pack in it uh, side to side or, you know, long ways. I really wish it would have had uh, more scuppers in it. I really wish the tank well would have had at least two scuppers and maybe even four to give that tank well a little bit more stability. And if you happen to go over a wave or if you happen to punch through some rough water, having multiple scuppers in there is gonna get that water out of the tank well faster, uh, and it's gonna allow you to get back control of the boat after you go through rougher waters. Some of you guys are probably saying, dude, what are you talking about? It just means you probably don't fish the kind of rivers that I fish in. It may not be that big of a deal, and we're gonna find out a little bit more when we flip the boat over uh, and take a look at the hull. One thing that I can tell you uh, after I make it back here is I am a big fan of how much track the boat has on it. There's nice tracks back here. They still leave you ample space to add more tracks if you want. Uh, the flush mount rod holders are installed. I'm, in, I'm torn on the flush mount rod holders. I do like flush mount rod holders. I just wish they weren't installed in the boat. Now that very well could be something that's particular to me, but I'm very particular about having my flush mounts where they stick out and I put a rod in here to test it and it does stick out wide and it gives you a pretty wide swipe when you've got the rods in there. Now, that being said, I also like it when I stick a camera pole in there because it puts the camera right where I need it. So again, I kind of wish they came with the flush mounts and I was able to put them where I wanted them versus them being installed in the boat at the factory. Again, that's probably just me. The vast majority of you guys don't want to install your own flush mounts and a lot of dealers don't even want to install flush mounts, but I just realized that there's a lot of good space here and I would like the consumer to have the control of whether or not they wanted to put the flush mount here, whether they wanted to orient the flush mount differently, or if maybe they just wanted to put a piece of gear track here or something along those lines. Uh, so back here, again, the only issue is I wish it had an extra scupper. Everything else is awesome. I love the size. I love the rigidity. I love the fact that the ridges are in here. So if you set a black pack or something, it's up out of the water. Um, and I like the drag chain setup. Uh, Jackson is probably the only kayak company and especially the first kayak company to put that, uh, that, that design for a drag chain right into the hole. But again, if you decide to put your power pole on there, you're probably gonna have to come up with some kind of spacer setup. Or if you put a motor on there, you're not gonna be able to use the drag chain, which again, could be fine. Uh, I'm a big fan of it. I like the fact that it's set up. Uh, I just wish from looking at it, I wish it looked like it was easier to put a motor on because a lot of folks are gonna wanna motorize. Now I'm gonna reach out to some of the top pros that have already fished this boat, get their thoughts and ideas on it. So again, this is my initial assessment, my initial overview, but again, big fan of the fact that it's already set up for drag chains. 
Uh, I like the fact that the top deck uh, lines are run there. Uh, but again, this is another one of those issues where if I run this line to the cockpit, then my flush mount's kind of right in the way. So my vote would be that the flush mounts came in, in the bag that, that Jackson includes with the, the MSO, the Manufacturer Statement of Origin, the water bottle that they include, and the rod holder that they include along with their, uh, their classic smiley face decal. Other than that, let's flip this thing over and take a look at the bottom of the hull and uh, that's where I'm gonna. That's where we're gonna find out where the rubber meets the road, and whether or not you know this thing is gonna be exactly what I'm looking for when it comes to the type of boat that I bought it for. I bought this boat specifically for the river. So let's break this thing down. Again, what I talked about when we were looking at the top of the boat is I like how the scuppers are angled. I like how they vacate from the back. That's gonna make the water clear, nice and easy. Again, when I was talking about the center cockpit. I like the, the, or the center uh, uh, pocket in the cockpit. I was a little bit worried about how this was gonna look on the bottom, but this doesn't stick up way up and it's a full ridge here. And a lot of times what happens is manufacturers put this thing there, it looks like a shark fin. And then the problem is that's gonna be the first thing that everything hits, but because this keel carries all the way down, your wear and your impact is gonna be distributed over the length of the keel. So that's a big deal. And it's going to protect your transducer scupper should you decide to put a transducer in there. Now, I would normally criticize a company for not putting a transducer port in there big enough for side scan, but I don't but I don't think this boat is designed for that. I think this boat is more designed for small water. I think it's designed for grab and go and I think it's designed for the river. So uh, the ability to put a uh, transducer in there, run your wiring through into the cockpit and still have some protection is huge. Ample amount of um scuppers again i really wish there would have been one more in the tank well wish they would have just carried this concept back but i do get it this is going to provide some rigidity rigidity down the center of the keel this keel looks like it's nice and protected uh, i may have wanted to bring this sacrificial keel a little bit further forward but again without testing it this very well may be all you need and i am a big fan of the sacrificial keel you know, in fact, I've got to go ahead and pat myself on the back. I was one of the first people to push for this uh, when I was working with another company uh, and that company started doing it and then everybody else followed suit. So I'm a big fan of that. Love the fact that the back handle is just molded in, nothing to fail, nothing to break, an ideal setup for a riverboat. So let's talk about predictions on performance. Love the fact that you've got a keel running down the center. That's gonna allow the boat to track really well, but because it's short, it's gonna also allow you to maneuver pretty well as well. Uh, love the fact that this is the lowest ridge down the center of the boat and you're not gonna have these impact points that are gonna to tend to wear. I like the rounded hull and I like the fact that by having these somewhat of a pontoon, you're gonna have that volume out away from center, center line, which is gonna provide some measure of stability, but without having them too deep, that's still gonna allow for some super great shallow water performance. So this boat I feel like is gonna allow me to sneak through some super shallow water. I think it's gonna allow us to get to some places. Now I'm gonna caution you guys on one thing that I can already see. These edges like this right here are somewhat problematic when it comes to backing up over tree limbs. But because there's only one on the front, Jackson did a good job of you not having to worry about if you ride your boat up over a log, you're getting stuck there. So uh, kudos to them on making these things nice and tapered to where that's not something that you have to worry about. Kudos to them for also making really nice um, scupper boxes on the bottom with a taper on the back because if you've ever paddled over a submerged tree and go like that and it scupper locks, having the ability to have that tapered where you can push forward and it'll bend and come out is huge. And if you've never experienced that, trust me when I tell you how awesome of a design concept that is to have that tapered scupper that vacates and more importantly, it allows you to get off of that submerged cover. Other than that, guys, I'm gonna tell you, I'm, a, I'm excited about getting this thing out on the water. I think it's gonna be a great river boat. Uh, the one thing that may hinder it when it comes to being that river boat is it is a little bit heavy uh, for what I would like as a grab and go boat, but for the width and the length, um, it's right in line with everything else on the market, probably even a little bit lighter when, than some of the boats that are out there on the market in the same length and width, because it doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles on it, which is ideal to keep the weight down. So for the stability that I'm looking for, the shallow water performance that I'm looking for, the durability that you want out of a boat that's gonna be constantly scraping the bottom, uh, I think they knocked it out of the park. So now the only thing left to do 
is to load this thing up, hit the river, and give you guys some of my on the water uh, feedback. I'll probably take it to a lake first for a shakedown so I can learn a little bit about it and decide what I want to put on it, what I don't want to put on it. But all in all, this is the Jackson Liska. If you guys have a Jackson Liska and you agree or disagree with some of the stuff that I said, please leave that stuff in the comment section below because ideally my goal here is to engage the community, to educate everybody about the features of all of the major uh, popular fishing kayaks so that I can provide a better service here at the channel. So guys, like I said, if you like this content, smash that thumbs up, leave a comment in the comment section. And as always, if you felt like you got some value out of this video, hit that subscribe button, turn on the notifications bell, so you'll know each and every time I release a new video.